Aloha everyone and welcome back to the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani Estates update for July 29th, 2018. Tonight being the Sunday night update, uh, we don't have any new updates uh, on the maps. Uh, maps are from 27th, but I, I put a thermal composite together and we're going to take a look at that along with a few other things. So if you're new to the channel, um, hit subscribe and uh, hit that bell icon also so that way you'll get notified of new videos when I post them. Uh, also, if course if you like the video um, please thumbs up it uh, lets me know that uh, you like what you're seeing and can help me determine what uh, I show you next um, so with that said let's get right into the, the basic update the USGS reports for Sunday July 29th 2018 at 11 29 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time that fissure 8 continues to erupt lava into the channel leading northeastward from the vent no overflows were reported this morning and the channels are near full. At the coast, the south edge of the lava flow has not advanced westward in the past day and remains less than 175 meters or 0.1 miles from the Pohoiki boat ramp in Isaac Halle Park. The active ocean entry is a few hundred meter yards to the east of this lava flow edge and no other fissures were active as of this morning. Now over on Highway 130, just south of Leilani Estates, the HVO field crews are still on site tracking activity as the conditions allow and are currently reporting information to the Hawaii County Civil Defense. Observations are also collected on a daily basis from cracks in the area of Highway 130. Right now there has been no significant changes in temperature, crack width, or gas emissions. Up on the Kilauea Volcano Summit, the most recent collapse event occurred at 2.37 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time on July 28th and was similar in character and magnitude to previous events. Seismicity is slowly increasing since Saturday morning's collapse event and, as of this posting, is 25 to 35 earthquakes per hour. Inward slumping of the rim and walls of Halemaumau continues. Sulfur dioxide emissions from the volcano summit are still very low. This gas and minor amounts of ash resuspended by wind are being transported downwind. Small bursts of ash and gas may coincide with the summit collapse events. The summit region is occasionally impacted by sulfur dioxide from the lower east rift zone eruption. And finally, the mini update for the Kilauea summit collapse events. A collapse event occurred this afternoon at 12.10 p.m. July 29, 2018. The magnitude was a 5.4 according to the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. And moving over to the State Highways report, there are currently no new cracks on Highway 11. State Highways Department requests motorists between mile marker 28 and 32 stay on the pavement and be alert for changes in roadway conditions. And finally, I would love to give y'all a EPA air monitoring sensor report. However, after checking the, um, the maps, uh, it seems the entire sensor grid for the Hawaii Island is down. As you can see by the map, the, all the black dots basically represent uh, sensors that are offline that have no connection. Um, I've seen this a few times. Usually it comes back up. Um, could just be a system-wide reboot. You know, it, it happens. Okay, and that does it for the basic update on the Kilauea eruption for tonight. Now, um, let's move on. Before I continue, though, I do have a question for you. Uh, I've been considering taking or considering uh, starting a Patreon account and putting up some, uh, you know, extra little project stuff that I do on the side here and there that I don't actually include in, into the YouTube. And uh, I didn't know if uh, y'all would be interested, so I figured I would um, basically uh, take a poll. So up at the top of the screen, there should be a little uh, white circle with an eye. At least that's what it looks like on mine. It's, it's a card. Uh, it should pop up and said, you know, asking the question, should I start a Patreon page? You know, click on it and select uh, yes or no for me. And uh, that'll kind of give me an idea of whether I should do it or not. So, um, I'll give you a minute to do that. I I'm patient. Um, go ahead, take your time. I mean, it really doesn't take that long. 
So I'm going to logically assume that everybody that wanted to do it has done it, and let's move on. Okay, I, I showed this composite map. This is a composite map of the lava flow fields and thermal imaging uh, with updated information uh, of where new breakouts uh, are occurring and, of course, the ocean entry areas. Uh, what I want to show you all on this one is that basically uh, this is the way I'm going to try to do these, these type of composite maps. Uh, with the coloration uh, because it really makes it very clear where the the warm spots are uh, in the in the lava flow fields and of course in the channel um, also while I'm showing this image I want to show you a comparison to a uh, previous uh, thermal imaging composite map that I did and uh, I want to challenge y'all to see if you notice what's missing Okay, here are the two images side by side. The one on the left is from July 9th, 2018, and the one on the right is from July 27th, 2019. Okay, so take a look at the uh, lava path in the channel and tell me what, what, what do you see that's different? Uh, I, I'll give you a few seconds, take a look. Um, because to me this difference actually is significant because I I think it's evidence towards something so okay I'm going to point it out now so for our first look at that there um, take a look at that there do you see it um, the second braid in the uh, channel is gone yes gone it shut down so I think this could be actual evidence that the volume has definitively decreased now I'm not gonna say it decreased a whole bunch um, but I think a, a significant amount because one of the the loops in the second braid uh, froze up it, it, it stopped you know flowing so what was keeping this channel open and what does keep it open is the the temperature of the lava as it travels down and the the speed and volume so with those three factors it makes it way down to the ocean so one of those three factors is now lower so either the temp the lava is cooler or the uh speed is slower or the volume is lower there it is you see it what do you think okay and for our next uh, little quick look at that there I want to look at this uh, most recent photograph of fissure 8 and I want to point out that if you look at that there our little lava tube right off the side of the cone is still going strong uh, so I, I've been wondering uh, how long that's going to last. I've actually went back and looked at some older photos and uh, saw that at some point it wasn't there. So I, I got to look through all the photos and figure out exactly when this thing appeared. Um, so anyways, uh, that's that. Okay, now this image. This is actually a very interesting image. It doesn't look like much other than, you know, a photograph of the, the lava river going, you know, down towards the ocean, blah, blah, blah. But there's actually quite a few interesting things in this photo. So first, we're going to start off with uh, something I've already talked about uh, back on the thermal map comparison, and that was one of the lobes of the second braid shutting down. So look at that there, top left corner of the screen, there on the far left, the, the dark uh, little spot that leads off of the, the channel where the two braids come together. If you continue to follow it around the left, it would curve back and go to the right and reconnect up there where the channel takes a turn. So I just want to point that out. The next interesting little thing I want to point out in this photo is if you look at that there right in the top center of the screen this line right here is highway 132 uh, traveling east towards four corners in Kapaho and if you look down here towards the bottom of course you see that the lava channel goes right across it 
and it kind of puts it in perspective because if you look at the road the road is a, a two-lane road now look at the lava channel you do the math okay and now for the last thing I'm going to point out in this image which I really think is the most uh, important interesting and fascinating uh, feature in the detail of what you're looking at uh, so are you ready here we go look at that there it's a little hard to see so let me pull out my little cursor dot and, and let me trace it out for you uh, basically it, it, what you're looking at here in the center of the screen that kind of dark you know you know curve shaped line uh, running you know right down the middle uh, it's got like that that edge built up on it with no lava this was actually a lobe in uh, the river braid right here that basically um, ran dry uh, the lava stopped flowing and migrate or migrated mostly through the the left side of the braid uh, so once this whole thing um, comes to an end and the lava stops flowing what we can expect to see is that uh, the, the whole river would look similar to this uh, so it's kind of like a micro snapshot of what it may look like when it's over but I also want to point out what's important about this is that with these braids shutting down that means there's changes in the flow dynamic the temperature the speed you know and all that stuff uh, so if it was increasing we would expect to see more branching and, and pushing towards the ocean and of course as things decrease you know we should see these features uh, begin to shut down um, which of course you know has its own issues because if the channel shuts down and, uh, and because there's not enough volume coming down the system then it's going to pull you know back up uh, somewhere you know and that's the the question where exactly will it finally you know pull out and break over like we had with the, the the lava ponding you know and the lava lakes that were being created and eventually they they burst through their sides and and began to flow and that's how the lava river was originally made in the first place and that'll do it for this segment of look at that there um, I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, it was kind of fun pointing those things out in the last photo um, and talking about them, of course. Uh, can't wait to hear some of your comments, things like that. So, anyways, I'm going to close this one up. Uh, check out my Smug Mug and Red Bubble. Links are in the description. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, thumbs up if you like it, share, um, and all that other wonderful stuff. Y'all have a great morning, evening, or afternoon. This has been the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani Estates update for July 29th, 2018.